Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Wednesday, October 27th with your morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, we continue in Matthew 18 today uh, with verses 21 through 35. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle account with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. Since he, since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold, with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he went and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you. He refused and went and put him in the prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgive you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him over to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so we get back to the importance of forgiveness. Um, and this is, you know, forgiveness is, is a big thing with me. <laughs> I'm always, always talking about forgiveness. Um, oh, gosh. Um, you know, forgiveness has always been a big deal. I mean, it's, it's a big deal in church, obviously, and in, in Christianity. But, you know, sometimes people kind of focus more on, um, you know, doing good works or this or that. Um, for me, it's all about forgiving, forgiving others. Um, because I've had such a, a hard time with it, uh, forgiving others, forgiving myself, that kind of stuff. So, um, this kind of a text is, uh, <laughs> it's just... A, a wonderful thing, where um, you know Peter. Peter in, in, envisions this this concept of well, our our forgiveness has to have limitations. I mean, how many times can my brother sin against me? How can this guy who is supposed to be you know my brother in in, in Christ, he sins against me, and I there's at some point I just have to say okay, no more. You know, sin on, sin against me once, shame on you. Sin against me seven times shame on me or something like that or shame on me shame on whatever you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's too early to think so um you know peter sees a, a a limit to it jesus does not jesus says there is no limit you keep forgiving because as a christian you are a forgiver this is what you do now you, you're baptized you become a forgiver that's who you are and so the the parable that he tells is um <laughs> to that effect is is this one guy owes an astronomical amount i mean it's the the amount ten thousand talents when he says oh oh please have mercy i'll pay you back it's laughable um you know it'd be like us owing a billion a billion dollars and saying oh well, I'll, I'll pay it back it's like you'll never be able to pay it back not in in a hundred lifetimes so the the shock of this is that the the, the master the the king um Let's go with the debt. He forgives it. He says, your debt is gone. Okay. 
Well, then he turns around, finds somebody who owes him money, just a small amount, 100 denarii, which is a very reasonable sum. Um, the guy says the same thing, I'll pay you back. But he says, nope, nope, I'm going to throw you in prison. And so the thing is, is that, uh, you know, he did not forgive as he was forgiven. Now, the, the tricky thing here is at the end, he says, so also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. So, you know, it leads us to think that, okay, well, now, you know, God's grace seems conditional on me forgiving people. That if I don't forgive, I be, I'm punished. But that's, um, you know, that's, <laughs> of course, that conflicts with the whole testimony of scripture, so that can't be right. So there's got to be something else going on here. Um, and so basically what, what we're seeing here is, you know, what is what is the story telling? Well, we have been forgiven everything. And of course, in, in, in Jesus Christ, every sin has been forgiven. So it's not just that, you know, the, the problem wasn't this guy was saying like, oh, my, sins, my debt is forgiven, but yours is not. See, Jesus forgives all sins. So if we are to be forgiven, if we are to, to uh, have our sins released from us, and then we are going to hold on to the sins of somebody else, essentially what we're doing at that point is we're rejecting Christ's forgiveness, okay, even for ourselves, um, because we are not acknowledging that Jesus died for those sins too. And so what we're dealing with then is unbelief. Okay, so the, the the refusal there there is there is certainly the refusal to forgive, which is a problem and it is a sin. Um, but there's also there, there's a refusal to forgive because you don't feel that you can, but you know that you need to. Okay, that's one case. There's also the for, refusal to forgive, and you don't care. You just don't want to forgive, and you don't see any need to. That's the problem, okay? Because when we when we don't forgive as Christians, and we know we should, and we struggle with it, and we find it very difficult, and there are situations where, honestly, it's, it's downright impossible for us. You know, sins that have been committed against us that have such traumatic effects on us that we simply cannot get there, okay? The problem there is, is is not that there's a refusal to sin, but that, that we just, for whatever reason, there's something blocking it. Is it sinful? Absolutely. But we acknowledge that we are deficient in this, and we go to God and say, Lord, have mercy. And and we are forgiven. We are forgiven for our lack of forgiveness. Um, and in those cases, we, we have to say, you know what? I'm going to have to let you forgive this Jesus, because I'm, I'm struggling with it. I can't get there. So that, that is in the realm of, okay, <laughs> you know, it's sin, yes, and you are forgiven for your sin. You know, so don't fall into despair because of it. You know, we, we certainly always want to strive to forgiveness, and God willing, if you are one of those who cannot get there with forgiveness and yet you want to, my prayer is that you will be able to someday. It might take a long time. It might take the rest of your life. I don't know. But if you are able to get there in this life, awesome, wonderful. That is my prayer for you. If not, if you are struggling with this your entire life and you die, you know what? When you open your eyes in the, in the resurrection, it's gone. You're freed from it. It is no more. Okay? So that's that's the promise and the peace that you have to look forward to. However, if you refuse to forgive because you don't see any need, that you don't want to, that you flat out refuse and don't feel compelled that, that there is a need to forgive. If you look at a situation that says, I don't need, or you know, either I don't need forgiveness or I don't need to forgive this person or whatever, that's the red flag. And, and that's not a place where I would say, well, you're, you know, you're condemned, <laughs> you know, you're out of the kingdom because that's not my place. <laughs> I would say that is a big red flag and I would be worried about that. And I would pray for you. Um, that you would repent of that and and be forgiven and seek for forgiveness because the thing is Christ gives forgives all so abundantly that it, it does become a silly thing when we take the sins of others and hold them up and say you must pay me back for this when it's like the cross the cross took care of it so what are we doing <laughs> um, this is hard this is really hard um, and honestly, when we struggle with forgiveness, when it feels like it's just not coming and it's not happening and you just, you've tried hard and you can't pull it out, um, the best 
advice I can give you, the best direction I could give you is to look to the cross and, and trust that he is strong enough to forgive all sins, that Jesus Christ is able to, and he has, and place your, your peace and your comfort in that, not in your own abilities, because that's, that's, your own abilities can't do anything. <laughs> You'll never do anything good enough uh, to, for, to, for you to be able to find peace in your ability. So you, you will never even find peace in your ability to forgive somebody. So if you're struggling with it, your peace is not in thinking someday I will be able to do this. Your peace is like someday I'll be able to trust enough in Jesus Christ and rely on him and find my peace in him that now it is no longer my burden. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, it's hard. I, I know <laughs> it is. Um, and so, you know, if, if that is something that you struggle with, you know, send me a message, send me an email. I'll pray for you. I'll pray with you. Um, because I, my, my heart really goes out to you. It's hard. I know, <laughs> but, uh, Jesus forgives you. He forgives all sins. And, uh, that is a, a great and mighty comfort that we have. All right, well, let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant this day we fall into no sin, and neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day today. And if, if nothing else, know that you are forgiven. And you can, you can forgive because it's not about you. And it's not about your forgiveness. It's about his forgiveness, Christ's forgiveness. Um, so you, you can because it's his forgiveness that you're, you're, you're tapping into. But if you're unable to, if you're just not there, you can't get there, know that you're forgiven. You know, seek his peace and, uh, and know it and, and just rejoice in it. So that is my hope for you to have a great Wednesday. And until tomorrow, peace be with you.